Independent members of parliament don't usually attract tough questions. And as we've seen over the past 24 hours, they don't like it on those rare occasions when they do. Normally, Warringah's so-called independent Zali Stegall never walks past a microphone without demanding more action on climate change and without demanding more integrity in our public life. But since the news broke yesterday morning that she'd failed to properly declare a $100,000 donation from a coal investing millionaire under investigation for tax fraud, she's discovered the dangers of pretending to be more moral than anyone else. Her problem is not only did she accept a donation from someone who's made money from the coal industry, the industry that Stegall demands should be shut down, but she then declared it as one big donation. That one big donation was broken into eight little ones in order to avoid the same disclosure rules she says aren't tough enough. If the coal industry is killing the planet, why is she prepared to profit from it, at least politically? And if our democracy is for sale, as Stegall has frequently claimed, why would she connive at selling herself in secret? Interviewed on the ABC this morning, she got herself into all sorts of trouble, claiming that splitting the donation to avoid disclosure was the donor's decision, not hers, not her campaign's. But then admitting that she and her team, well, they'd made a rookie error. She then said that the donor was frightened of being targeted by the Liberal Party. But then she said she's never spoken to the donor. She further said that if the donor's names were known, they would be victimised. Yet she continued to insist that all political donors should be disclosed in real time. Finally, she insisted that the donation had always been fully disclosed, even though the record was only corrected to disclose the donor's name as required for donations over $13,000 after the Electoral Commission had pointed out her failures. This episode has highlighted not just Stegall's hypocrisy but also her mendacity. Without any evidence, she claimed that the big parties received, quote, millions and millions in undisclosed donations. Now, this is just wrong. Then she claimed that the system was rigged against independent candidates like her. It's hard to see how this could be the case when every independent member and senator, well, they get seven full-time staff, courtesy of you, the taxpayer, compared to just four staff if you're an MP for Labor or the Liberals. So let's be very clear about what's really happening here with the well-organised left-wing political movement that pretends it isn't anything other than uh, climate lovers, of which Stegall is a part. The so-called Voices candidates, now running against Liberals and only Liberals in well-heeled seats, are hardly independent at all. They're all being bankrolled by a millionaire, Simon Holmes Accord, whose way of appeasing his guilty conscience, perhaps, at inheriting a fortune, appears to be campaigning against the party that made most of his inherited wealth possible. It's telling that the finance director of Stegall's 2019 campaign is now a director of Climate 200, the vehicle being used to fund Holmes Accords Voices candidates. Holmes Accord has been instructing these very candidates how to campaign, what to say, including refusing to say who they'd back in a hung parliament. He's instructed them, don't tell the voters. I mean, so much for transparency and integrity. Even though Stegall and her fellow Voices candidates routinely denounce the big political machines, it now seems that she's as good as anyone at manipulating the system for her own advantage. Last December in Parliament, attacking former Attorney General Christian Porter for a blind trust, that Stegall claimed would have breached transparency, she boasted that many independents, quote, voluntarily over-report. Well, not so now. She said of Porter, I know the Australian people can see through this. Well, now, we can all see through her. Having been exposed as a rank hypocrite, she should be vulnerable in her Sydney seat. But the supposedly all-powerful Liberal Party machine, well, they haven't got around to even picking a candidate yet in her seat of Warringah, as well as another other key seats in New South Wales. It's hard to be optimistic about our country, isn't it, when sanctimonious frauds are criticised in the media yet remain unchallenged in their electorates.